Hi, my name is Brent and in this video I'm going to show you quickly how to make expense categories and to manage them. Uh, we went over this in a lot more detail in our other expenses videos, but this one is just for a quick reference guide so it's more concise. At the top of your screen you'll see expenses. Now this isn't the only path to do these things, these are just the path I'm going to use to uh, quickly show you how to do things. Um, there are shortcuts to this, like from the order summaries, uh, where you can add expense categories and make adjustments and stuff, but this is the, the standard way of doing it. So you, when you click on expenses at the top, you have three options here. First is how you manage your expense categories, add new ones and so forth. This is where you would log your uh, expenses for your non-order tracking expenses. For example, you just paid your E&O insurance premium, so you want to log that. If you made a purchase, you need to uh, track for uh, tax purposes. Same thing, you'd use this. And this is for running reports and so forth. Though uh, your P&L will include these, so this is just more reports for your purposes. Not necessarily reports for uh, your accountant, unless he's asking for detail on uh, a certain expense category for whatever reason, and you can give him an item itemized report for that category. Let's start here. So these are uh, categories. The This one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here are default categories. You're all going to have those when you start. Uh, I've added this one for fun um, and this one here for fun. So let's add another one so you can see how to manage or how to add a category. You can either click this button up here straight off or you can type a name of the category first and then hit the button. Um, we'll do that. Uh, let's make a category for E&O insurance. So e insurance will be monetary. We'll go into statistical tracking uh, expenses later in this video, in this quick video. So for settings, um, you don't want to track e insurance on an individual order basis. One order to the next, you did five orders in one day. It doesn't matter what your e insurance premium was for the year. So this is not like miles. It's not an order tracking expense. So you're not going to check this box. Um, there's no multiplier involved here, you're just going to be entering a dollar amount, so uh, like mileage would have a multiplier, 57 and a half cents, uh, if you're still in 2020 watching this video, um, but we're not, uh, there's nothing involved with E-No insurance, and this is just what appears in the expense line. If this particular category had 50 entries during the year, this is just what would distinguish them, so to say E, in this case, E-No insurance. And then so for description, we'll just put E and O and insurance premium. And we're gonna acquire this the dollars. All this means is when you enter uh, an expense item into this category, it's just gonna be a dollar amount. You're not multiplying times anything like miles. And that's it, save. So now we have this category right here. So if you ever want to edit it, change any of the attributes we just went through, you can click on this here, you can delete it, you can rename it, but you can manage all that from here. You don't have all these buttons available for those four default categories, but you do for the ones that you make yourself from scratch. And as you can see, I already had two other ones made on here. So that's how you quickly add a category. Um, let's say you want to uh, add an item to that particular category. You just paid your E&O insurance. So because we're just using it, it's already like, I bet you want to add something here. And so that's why it's already on E&O insurance, but there's all your stuff on the drop down there. So of course, dollar amount, you can always, if you have some situation where you're toggling back and forth between a multiplier and not a multiplier within a particular category you can toggle things back and forth but for insurance we're just going to stick with this let's say you just paid 85 dollars for your you know insurance and um, you can even add more to this description line this is just what you put in for the default when you created the category but you can also put for for 2021 for example and enhance on that. If you want to upload uh, your copy of your 
uh, receipt for when you paid it. Um, or if you got an email saying, thank you for paying this, you paid this amount, you now own this insurance, you can just copy that email, start with hello, whatever your name is, go to the end of the email, copy, come here, click this, paste, and you'll have a little receipt saved with it uh, if you don't have anything to upload. Don't click save, and now we have an entry. Back to our menu, and quickly over here you can see how many entries we have for each item so I have 11 orders that I've played around with in this test account and uh, all these other ones just have one entry characterization of act we've had six but we know now that we have one you know insurance but let's see what this reports tab shows us you can run reports see your recent entries down here um, let's say we want to run a quick report. So we'll do all categories. We want to itemize everything. We're going to use only a selected date range. This would be all time. Uh, but selected date range, we're just looking at 2020 here. And uh, we're going to show it as a preview and go. So here's this top section is every expense uh, entry we have in the system for all your categories. This is just a test account. This might be hundreds of items. Uh, if you were uh, been busy all year and have multiple expenses for especially for each individual order down here this summarizes everything with totals this is the information that's also going to appear on your profit and loss so let's go back to uh, expenses and let's look at different types of categories so I have showed you how to make just a generic E&O insurance one but let's say you want to make a drop down list of the type of closings that you're doing, the type of uh, signings you're doing. You like to keep track of that. Is it a refi or is it a purchase? Uh, that kind of information. You can use the expense framework to do that, even though it's not really affecting your taxable income, information your accountant sees. This is just for you, but it worked well within this framework. So we're going to create a new category and let's call this type of signing Add category this is going not going to be a monetary one this is going to be a statistical one and this one is relevant on a per order basis obviously so we're going to say track and for the description it's going to put type of signing and this is going to be a drop down. So we're going to call it drop down type of signing. Save. And then let's add a value refi. We'll do full purchase. And then you can do buyer only, seller only. You get the picture cash deal. Oops. We'll just keep it at that for now just for illustrative purposes and click save. So now this because we designate it as an order tracking will also appear on your order summaries like mileages would. Let's check that out. We'll pick on uh, one of these test orders here. Expenses even though this really doesn't involve money. You can see right here type of signing. I can select this was a refi and update. So we can run reports now and look at how many refis, how many full purchases you did. So that's very useful. This is also useful for those of you who work with a team and you're using one Venmox account, there might be two or three or four or more of you uh, doing signings as a company and you want to know who did which signing. So you list out all your partner uh, notary names and uh, when whoever does the signing does the signing, they complete the order, they pick their name off the list and now you're keeping track of who did what. So uh, updating categories. Of course you can go to the expense section here and click on manage expense categories but since we're in an order summary like I said at the beginning of this video there's more than one routes to get to your destination so we could uh, work on things straight off an order summary if you have an order in the system already so let's say uh, it's a new year and the IRS just said hey we're gonna make the um, mileage expense 60 cents per mile instead of 57 and a half 
still go to mi total miles traveled. And it, like I said, we can go expenses, categories, miles traveled. But we can jump straight to that from here and edit that category at a global level. So this is a default category, so some stuff is grayed out. We put this on there for you. But in this case, you want to change it to whatever it is. Let's say it is uh, January 2021, January 20th, and say you need to update this to 60 cents now. So we'll do 0.6. So from this moment forward, any order you complete, we'll use 60 cents and not 57 and a half. But we need to adjust all our orders going back to the beginning of 2021. So you would do that by changing this to 0.6 as well. You want to retroactively apply. You don't want to change all time because in 2020 it was 57 and a half cents. You don't want to change that. You just want to change it for 2021. So you would change this from all time to a date range and you just select uh, custom range and you would uh, do January of 2021 and I'm doing this at the end of 2020, so I'm a little ahead of myself making this video. But you, you get the picture, you would get the date range back to the first day of the year, and you change it to whatever the IRS said. And then you just click Apply and Save, and that would not only update the mileage to 60 cents moving forward, it also retroactively updates it in that date range we selected. So that completes this quick expense guide video. Again, if you want more detail, you can watch the other uh, expense videos that go into more detail. Just wanted to get this one out there with uh, all the information consolidated in case you're just looking for a brief overview. Thank you very much, and let us know if you have any questions.